Okay, so if you were, um, it's really easy. I don't know how um, it was shown to you, but it's really easy if you understand just the words. All right, so the transversal and the parallel lines is generally how we will be discussing these relationships. All right, however, they don't have to be parallel. All right, if they're not parallel, then we can't uh, prove what angles are congruent. So right now, I want to just go through these because I felt this was helpful. In the past, I thought people just knew, all right, but they don't. So everybody should be able to tell me three, four, five, and six are interior angles. Interior of what? Interior of these two lines, all right? They're on the inside, all right? Now, if those are on the inside, then the exterior angles would be what? One, eight, right, one, two, eight, and seven. So you have interior angles and you have exterior angles. All right, line T is called the transversal because it intersects the other two lines. All right, now, if you want to discuss, or now that you know the difference between alternate uh, or, or between interior and exterior, now we can talk about alternate interior. Alternate just means on opposite sides, all right? So if you look at T and you look at the four interior angles, there's a relationship between the alternate interior angles, all right? And if you remember your alternate interior angles, if the lines are parallel, are always congruent, all right? But we will prove all this information. But right now, I just want you to be able to tell me the alternate interior angles are four and six and three and five. Does everybody agree with that? All right. Then we have alternate exterior angles. The alternate exterior angles would be one and seven and two and eight. Is everybody good with that? Right. Now, the important angles, which sometimes are harder for kids to see, are what's referred to as corresponding angles. All right, the corresponding angles I used to tell kids are on the top and on the right side, all right? So two and six are corresponding. They're on the top right. One and five are also considered corresponding. They're on the top what? Left. Corresponding angles, four and eight, those are bottom what? Left. And three and seven are what? bottom right. All right. So corresponding angles are in the same relationship. All right. With the other angle. Hopefully that makes sense. All right. So we have corresponding angles. We have alternate interior. We have alternate exterior. And now we have what's referred to as the same side interior or consecutive interior. All right, so what two angles are on the interior and considered consecutive interior? Consecutive just means they're on the same side of the transversal, all right? So four and five are considered consecutive interior and three and six are considered consecutive interior, all right? That's the big lesson for today, the description of all those angles, all right? Now, some books call them consecutive interior angles. I call them consecutive interior angles. Other geometry books call them same side interior angles. Notice we didn't say anything about consecutive exterior angles. All right, I'm not sure exactly why that was never defined, but it has never come up. You don't say consecutive exterior angles or you don't say same side exterior angles for whatever reason, I don't know. All right, but those are the ones <clears throat> that you are responsible for. All right. Now, the next little bit is you're just now getting into the homework where we're just going to classify them. All right. So everybody has to look at, and we'll just go through these. All right. So one and eight are called what? Yes. Two and four. What are two and four? Yes, they are on the top right, corresponding. 
three and six. Wait, corresponding what? Three. Corresponding angles. Alternate. Yes, three and six are alternate interior. And six and seven are what? Yes, consecutive interior. So I think once you understand interior, exterior, um, it becomes much easier. All right. Now, let's review. All right. Because none of those were, uh, they didn't tell you they were parallel. So let's now make some parallel lines. All right. And I think tomorrow we get into all the proofs. But if these lines are parallel here and these are parallel, that's the sig or that's the uh, symbol for parallel. All right. What looks to be true about this angle here and this angle here? What looks to be true? Yeah, they're definitely corresponding. So what's true about those two angles? They're congruent. That is correct. Now, as soon as I adjust this, are they congruent anymore? No. no. So they have to be what? They have to be parallel in order for these properties to hold true. All right. And these are actually theorems. Tomorrow we will say that the corresponding angle is a postulate, but the others are theorems. All right. So we cannot prove that these are equal. All right. We just made observations and we tried to draw and we tried to make it so they were parallel, but not congruent. And that has never happened. All right. So based off observation, we said that corresponding angles are always congruent if the lines are parallel. All right. So now that you know that. All right. Let's take a look at this angle here. Let's take a look at this angle here and this angle here now. What are those angles called? Corresponding interior. Not corresponding. Alternate. Yep. Yeah. Alternate interior angles. And what looks true to be, uh, well, what looks to be true about alternate interior angles? They're congruent. And it's so easy to prove that because these two angles are congruent because they're corresponding, correct? These two angles are congruent because they are what? Vertical. All right. Then by substitution, you can say that the alternate interior angles are congruent. Do we agree with that? It's super easy. Super easy. All right. Even if you don't think you know, you could just logically look at that and say all of the obtuse angles are probably what? Equal and all the acute angles are probably what? Mm -hmm. Equal. That's how easy this is. All right. So if we were looking at alternate, everybody look at alternate exterior angles. What looks true about the alternate exterior angles? They are congruent, right? They're on opposite corners. So they are what? Congruent because they're either both obtuse or they're both what? Mm -hmm. Acute. Exactly. That's how easy this is. Even if you forget everything I'm telling you, all right, it's easy to reproduce and easy to think logically about it and just say, you know, it's true. This section is super easy, probably the easiest one we're going to be doing. All right. So again, if I look now at consecutive interior angles, are the consecutive interior angles congruent? No, because one of them is, and one of them is, so anytime you have an acute and an obtuse, they will always be what? Not They will be what? Someone else. They're deaf. Well, they could be equal if they were perpendicular. All right. If the transversal was perpendicular, they would be congruent. So what's true? You're supposed to make a little observation. What is true about this angle right here and this angle right here, or about this angle right here and this angle right here? They're what? That is correct. They are supplementary. All right. How do we know they're supplementary? Well, because we know that these two angles form a linear pair, which means they're supplementary. Do we agree with that? And we know that this is equal to this, correct? So if we know this plus this is equal to 180, 
I can substitute this in for this, and then you'll have those two angles equal to 180. Does everybody make sense on that? It's super, super easy. All right, so consecutive interior angles are supplementary. However, we can go one step further and say, whenever you have an acute angle, regardless of where it is, and there's an obtuse angle, we automatically know they have to add up to what? 180. So again, I was always puzzled by the fact that they don't say alternate exterior, all right, because, uh, or consecutive exterior angles. What's true about consecutive exterior angles? They add up to 180. They add up to 180, right? It's just that simple, all right? The acute angles are congruent. The obtuse angles are congruent. Acute and obtuse always add up to what? 180. That's how simple this section is, all right? So with that little bit of information now, all right, we will look at this figure over here. Now, is this figure in questions five through seven, are the lines parallel? Yes, 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 sorry. All right, they are parallel because of those pink little arrows, all right? So because of that, if we know angle one is 94, in my opinion, all right, if I were doing this, I would just put 94 and I would answer all of the questions. If that's 94, then one, seven, three, and five are all what? That's how easy this is. All right. Then I have two, eight, four, and six. Those are all going to be 86. Exactly correct. That's how easy it is. All right. Again, I know that doesn't take much time. All right. So that's all we're asking. All right, that's all we're asking. Now, as I flip through the page here, all right, um, you will, um, what, what I guess I want you to know is that the corresponding angle postulate, all right, there's a corresponding angle postulate. We have to accept that the corresponding angles are congruent. But after that, everything else is a what? Everything else is a theorem because we will be proving them all. All right. Is everybody with me on that? All right. I don't expect you to write down corresponding angle postulate. All right. You can just tell me what the measure of each angle is. If you know now what all of the angles represent, that's what's important. You need to be able to say, I know what alternate interior, I know what alternate exterior, I know corresponding, I know consecutive interior, I know verticals. All right. All of those different types of angles you have to be able to tell me what they are, all right? And once you can do that, the problems are very easy. All right, so now I'm just going to scroll down the page because I think it's easy. Scrolling down, all right. Now, even the algebra here is super easy, all right? So if I'm looking at 13, what's true about 104 and X minus 10? Alternate Yep, and alternate exterior angles are what? congruent that is correct so we could be able to or we should be able to just look at that and say x is obviously what yes x is equal to 114 degrees all right now sometimes I, I get a little upset with the way they have put in these angles but again i'm assuming this goes here and when i write my test and stuff i'll have little arrows to make sure that you understand exactly what ones they're pointing to but if you make a mistake because you thought the angle was in the wrong position, do I really care? I don't really care. All right. So if you assume one is one and it's really supposed to be the other, it doesn't really matter to me. It's just all of them have a relationship. They either are congruent or they add up to 180. So if you make the wrong assumption, you'll just be doing adding it to 180 rather than equal. Does that make sense? All right. So the 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 figures should be easily uh, recognized as what angle goes where, but sometimes the book doesn't do a very good job with that. All right. I'm pretty confident today in all of that. Like I said, uh, the equations that we're using um, aren't really a big deal. All right. They're not very difficult. All right. So it's just you practicing, understanding the different uh, types all right, of angles and what to do when you see them. All right, so now let's take a look at question number 40.
All right. So let's just take a quick look at that and let's see if we can prove that angle one and two are supplementary and we wanna prove that angle three and four are supplementary. All right, I think I already did this for you, but this is kind of the formal uh, proof. All right, so we can say, obviously number one is what? Given. Copy, paste that right here. So we have that. Wait, what does that given even mean? Can someone help him? What does the given even mean? What? That's right. That's exactly what that means. M is parallel to N. All right. I think in in uh when I write it now, I will say when you say parallel, it's supposed to be more of a slanted line. You with me like that? But I think the only thing they have right now is those vertical lines. All right. So that's the symbol for parallel most of the time. All right. Now, angles one and three form a linear pair, and angle two and four form a linear pair. So what can we say? I think that's just the definition of what? Linear pair. I'm okay with that. How can it be a definition if we just use it for a reason? Like, you just said they are a linear pair. So how is that the definition of a linear pair? Well, what do you want it to be? So I, I don't know what it should be, but why is it just the definition if we have, we know that they are linear. What's the definition of linear pair? Two angles that are 180. Two angles that are adjacent to each other, right? That add up to 180 degrees. All right, so we have part B. Now, if two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. So what is that telling us? Yes, I like it. Angle one plus angle three equals 180 degrees. And we can also say what? Angle two plus angle four equals 180 degrees. Two angles form a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Um, yeah, yeah. I I used to, and and again, some of the geometry books are different. All right, that's I used to say that was called the linear pair postulate. All right, linear pair postulate. All right, huh? Yes, we could see would you could write linear pair postulate. Now, why is angle one congruent to angle four and angle two congruent to angle three? You're right, alternate what? Right, if two lines are parallel, then the alternate interior angles are congruent, right? So one is congruent to four and two is congruent to three. And I used to write down alternate interior angles are congruent. And if you want to write down alternate interior angle theorem, that's fine. I just like to write alternate interior angles are congruent. So now they want to write the definition of congruence, right? Angle one is equal to angle four and Measure of angle two is equal to measure of angle three. And now we can just say what? What are we sub? Well, what are we doing here? Yes, exactly.
then we can say that's a what? Substitution. Yeah, we could just say that's substitution. Do we agree with this? Anybody have any issues? But again, I, I don't really like the way the book did this. All right. Yes, ma'am. Well, uh, because they're telling you here, look, that when you add things up, they have to be equal, right? Angle one plus angle three equals 180. All we have right now is angle one is congruent to angle four and angle two. So in order to make a substitution, the substitutions have to be equal. You with me, but you know, like I said, if if we skip that step, sometimes I, I'm not going to argue about it. You with me on that? All right, that's why I don't I don't like the book. I don't like filling in. I like to write my own proofs. All right, so that's essentially all we have for today. All right, so what I want you to do now is um, I just want you to go through and just answer all of these questions and just make sure you're good with all of that. I really don't think it'll take you that long. All right, please get the work done. If you have any questions, you can let me know.